Jim. Hey, everybody. I'm here at uh, a ham fest in Nixon, Missouri. I've never uh, done anything with you guys in a ham fest, but I thought I'd venture out, mainly because uh, one of our sponsors and affiliates are here, and I had to had to introduce you to him in case you've never met him. But you already know who he is. He's been on a he's been on a lot of podcasts, different shows, and stuff. But I'm here at the Spec Five table, and I've got Daniel. Daniel, sure, great to see you. Nice he has come up to bluegrass country. Yeah. I asked your wife earlier, who's too shy to get on camera, apparently, but I asked her if she's heard banjos now, and, and she said, yeah, so I guess you've been here long enough. But uh, So you came up to this ham fest, which you guys have been doing a lot. You've been going to a lot of ham fests. Those that follow them on Spec5, follow your social media. But you've been going out, doing a lot of ham fests. How's that going for you? Uh, you know, from the get-go, when we started Spec5 back in uh, early 2024, the ham radio community has was always like our first major customer base. So getting out to the ham fest, talking to the people in person um, has just been such such, such a blast. Uh, back in July, I went and got my tech technician license what? myself. Congratulations! Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, uh, so that's, been, that, that's you know, and that's just been ev everyone in the community like you should get your license, you should yeah. get your license. And finally I was like, all right, yeah. I need to do this. And uh, so I'm excited that that I got that. And Very I cool. Congratulations. Say I'm, I'm a part of it. That's cool. Well, and I heard you telling one of the people looking at your products on the table, don't just buy one. So once you got your license, now it's like a whole rabbit trail of just, <laughs> these ham fests are awesome because you find new stuff, you find new dealers and vendors like yourself. And, yep. and you actually did a presentation here today at this ham club and uh, it was packed out. It was uh, standing, room only. standing room only, and there was people still wanting to come in. Uh, I think I heard them say next year uh, they're going to try to get you back, but they're going to do an auditorium. So uh, how's that been going for you? You've been seeing a response going, still going really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I do get contacted by quite a few ham clubs like, hey, can you do a presentation on this? And depending on scheduling and other things that we've got going on, I will I, I will do that. And that's that's something that that I really enjoy just getting, uh, you know, getting this technology out in front of the guys who have been playing in the space, but may have not have, ne have never heard it. And it's always interesting to see how many guys are just like, wow this is really cool but i've never heard of it yeah. or i've heard of something similar that they did five ten years ago that's no longer around um, so yeah it's been it's always a always a great experience to get this in front of people who who aren't playing with it yet that's cool yeah i, I you know uh, i first got into mesh probably i feel like it's been two years now and uh it was just in its infancy uh things were just getting started but and, and partly I keep thinking that, okay, any minute it's going to quit, but it doesn't. It just seems like it's just everybody's interest keeps going. And then today you were, you were introducing new uh, firmware that could go out. You guys are working on firmware add on. You're doing different software. You've got your, you guys are known for your, uh, your chess and, and some of the games you do on there. So, uh, but that's just, that's just a fun side. There's a lot of professional things people are doing with it. And uh, you, you've got some new gear. I, one of my uh, local members here brought me over and said, check this radio out for me, make sure it's good. But you've got some new devices out. Uh, what do you have new that's on the table today? Anything that you're just, uh, I've been seeing a lot of your stuff come out, these little cell phones now that like a little James Bond looking yeah. device, but. Yeah, so this this one specifically isn't, uh, isn't new. This is our Spectre. Uh, I think we've had this for sale for about six six months now, right. maybe since the beginning of the year. We actually just launched a what we're, we're calling a Spectre Pro, so it's a slightly slightly larger larger screen, um, and it is a Android interface with the Meshtastic radio on the back, the LoRa radio on the back. Uh, the Pro version again, bigger screen, mm -hmm. new uh, runs a newer version of Android. And we're actually offering it with a data sim as well, nice. um, so you can have uh, you know so, some some 4G data uh, with with the LoRa radio. Um, so yeah, just uh, trying to continue like mixing and matching different um, different communications in a in an affordable de in an affordable device. The uh, Spectre Pro, even with the data sim card, I think it's still going to be under three hundred dollars. So uh, a, fu a fully functional phone with with Laura Meshtastic, um, 
all for, tethered for, together for a very affordable rate. So it's not, you know, I think kind of the, the use case there is whether it's you know for a commercial application, handing an employee a phone or handing a kid, yeah. you know, their first phone that that already has that backup mode of com, comms on it. Um, yeah, it's just a very very interesting device, and I'm really interested to see where the users, where the customers yeah. take it and use it. That's what that's been the most exciting part about all this. Where we come out with a product, we think we know how someone's going to use yeah. it, and then they they come back to us and they're like, oh, I did this with it, I did yeah. that with it. Welcome to our hobby, yeah. yeah. And and that and that gives us ideas for the next one. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I tease the fact that we're a hobby, but uh, I mesh tastic, and this is something you brought up in your talk uh, at your lecture here that you did was that you would like to even step into more commercial stuff. Absolutely. And uh, you and I talked a long time ago about that over Zoom and uh, how we, even here, uh, you guys sponsored uh, one of our hospitals here with your Spec5 Relay. Uh, I was up on the roof yet, uh, Thursday this week and checking it out. Everything's still working really good. So Excellent. really good that. thing. But uh, our hospital here is now, they've got five campuses uh, spread out over this whole region and they're putting one on each of the hospitals. Uh, our emergency manager in the town that I live in is all on board with it. They're getting they're getting their cert teams out. They're search and rescue teams, uh, different different uh, because they they don't necessarily need those Motorola high end radios for talking. They need something simple as like this. Uh, that especially with the GPS is built in the tracking capabilities. They could do asset tracking. Yep. Uh, so we've been really uh, seeing a big push in that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I know there's some some items that you're wanting to push in that direction too. Uh, what what do you see? Hope, what's your hopes in that too? Just obviously we're expanding and growing, but yeah, the um, you know the first responder and in, in, in emergency management sector is something that we're really pushing to get into more, and we're we're starting to get some bites. We're we're starting to get some different departments and mm -hmm. counties. Um, doing small purchasing, starting to test out the ecosystem. And, um, and I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of opportunity for growth, both on just equipping all the different teams, all the different resources um, that would be used in emergency situations, in search and rescue operations, uh, you know, whether it's comms, whether it's tracking. Um, but then, you know, once, once one of these mesh systems is, is established in a county, then you can add sensors. You can get real-time data being being transmitted. Um, so it's not just about about a simple, you know, GPS tracking and, and text message communication. Like once you have that that backbone established, you can use it for so much more. Right. right. So I just read an article, um, and I'll have to send that to you. But it was an article down out of Texas, and I know you guys are based out of Texas down there. And this was in that flood zone down yes, there sir. where all that flooding happened. And uh, and I don't want to say big name radios uh, for liability reasons, but uh, uh, the article was basically saying the big name system failed. They had holes, they had areas of vulnerability. But then you also brought up the, the sensors and stuff. And yep. I started thinking, how nice would it be? And, and the price compared to, let's say, $8,000 handheld radio. And that's no joke. That's on mm -hmm. the bottom end of things. Yep. Uh, on some of these spectrums of these radios, but uh, you know, you could you could easily you could equip a whole community at that price Absolutely. with something like this, Absolutely. and have sensors that uh, are monitoring lake levels. Yep, that's one of our. We work with our emergency manager pretty close here, and uh, that one of their big floods is uh, our concerns is flooding. Yeah, uh, we've had a lot of flooding in that area. So, so I set out. I was like, okay, can I? I tried to get uh, chat GPT to help me write some code to go pull that data from the lake levels from the government's website, mm -hmm. uh, Corps of Engineers, and their API wasn't working very well. <laughs> so it, it struggled. And, and then you just, you said today in there, you're like, we just took the sensor up. And I'm like, well, that's, that's so much simpler. So, yeah. so how easy is it for people like, uh, I mean, you guys do offer some support. I heard you're a small company. Uh, I like that personally better than, ordering something from overseas and and hoping everything's working good and uh you've got good customer service skills Thank i've been you. watching you here you're working you've answered almost every question i think good and even the hillbilly questions of some <laughs> of the, no, guys. but uh uh is there a lot of opportunity for that i i really i could see that growing 
uh, especially in emergency management. Yeah, type yeah, that, that's definitely something we're we're very interested in. Um, prior to Spec Five, um, starting Spec Five, my boss and myself um, worked for you know industrial data, industrial AI companies. So I was the sensor guy. I was nice. I was doing do, doing the hardware for those systems. So um, you know that's kind of our, our bread and butter. And that's, and that's kind of the, the direction that we've always seen to take these mesh radios and this, and this mesh networking is how do we, you know, combine data and comms and, and, and having enough uh, technology, enough processing power to take action, to yeah. help people, yeah, that's true. to warn people. Um, and the, I think the, the beauty of, these these LoRa mesh radios is that since it is an open band, anyone can receive that message. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not locked into just the police department, right. just the fire department. Like everyone can receive that alert at the exact same time. And I think that's for flood warning, tornado yeah. warning. Like that's a system that no other system can do right now. Right, right. And, and the thing is, too, like you said, it's an affordable price. You can have emergency management channel. Uh, they're not going to interfere with the uh, private sector. So I've got, like, on the same repeater that I've got up on the house, I have a channel that's for my family and then a, the emergency alert channel. Mm -hmm. That's not going to interfere. They're not going to see that. I'm not going to see their messages or not. So that's the beauty with, like, law enforcement, government agencies, is they can still have their encryption. But now, literally, the whole community is building this together. And uh, it benefits everybody. Absolutely. So, so it's something that not only helps our cert team down there, they were looking for some kind of radio or something that they could, they don't necessarily need to talk to them on the radio, just mm -hmm. to send a little text message over Laura. And yeah. we've got our whole community is, uh, I was really honestly surprised how uh, open a lot of the government agencies have been. The hospitals, they're like, get up there. Yeah, put put something up. And yeah. And uh, we're some of the, some of them had old cellular sites and we're actually using some of the old cell antennas on them. So there's a lot of uh, momentum moving that way. So even still after a couple of years, I think this is still, even here at this Hamfest, it was the most popular mm -hmm. uh, session you guys had. And uh, hopefully, hopefully they took advantage and got some good deals while they were here. So, awesome. uh, tell us about your website. Where can people go and check out stuff? Uh, our website is www.spec5.com. S P E C F I V E dot com. Uh, we've got all of our all of our products available for sale. Um, they typically ship in five to eight business days after the after the order is placed, because we do assemble everything nice. per order. Nice. Um, yeah, everything everything's assembled and shipped out of Texas. I see something new that you're prototyping over there. I don't know if you want to spill any beans yet or not, but um, I do, I'm a huge fan of having a node on my car. The reason being is I'm inside this building now, so there's a good chance the, the big repeaters out across town aren't gonna hear it. So I put a node on my car. It's and it, several of our members of our clubs got them on their cars. Uh, so I believe in having that as set to client mode. My pocket's set to client mute mode, yep. but I, it, every time it relays out. So so I'm curious to see what you've got here. This looks really cool. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a prototype of our Spec Five Voyager. Uh, we launched this a couple months ago uh, with magnetic mounts. Um, so solar panel, LoRa radio, battery, GPS, all of that magnetic uh, mounted to the roof of your car. We had quite a few customers come back to us very quickly and say, hey, my my truck is, is aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> Magnets aren't going to work. Um, so this is the suction cup version. Uh, it's been riding around on the on the roof of my car for the past two weeks now. I can say that the, the suction cups do Works exactly really good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what i want them to do uh you know uh nice nice fast texas highway speeds yeah. it's good <laughs> rain it's good um you know driving all through the through the through the ozarks this this past week it's been on there no, no problem possums hit or uh, nothing like no. that that's good so, that's good um, so yeah we'll be we'll be launching this this version of the voyager in the in the next couple of weeks um so yeah you know non-ferrous cars aluminum or uh, or even cars like full full glass roofs, uh, the suction cups will nice, work nice. well over the uh, magnetic version. You know, in in this world of mesh, there's not been a mesh testing specifically. There's 
not been a lot of dealers or vendors per se. It's it's more here's a part you can order this from overseas or this this. Yeah. So you were, I think, one of the pioneer companies in, in the U.S. that uh, really took a hold of this, uh, and, and you're you're growing it. Uh, you were you were innovative on the the app. I saw the chest, and I'm like, dude, that's so cool. And just the ideas and the forward thinking, I really like. Uh, uh, do you have any plans for the future? I mean, obviously you keep growing, but yeah. Uh, so I think the big thing, like we talked about, is is integrating the sensor technology um, and and having uh, having just that little bit of compute power to respond and react uh, to add more functionality to to this ecosystem. Um, and uh, you know, one of the one of the terms that that we that we came across in discussions uh, with with people in this space is is increasing civilian resilience wow that's and good. that's exactly what this what what this ecosystem and our products do um and and we want to continue taking all these different technologies that we can integrate with these mesh radios um and add that as a package for for the civilian for the county emergency management team, um, and and even even at, at higher levels of, of government and public safety. That's awesome. And in that world too, there's there's a big need for. Uh, it's not something they just order overseas. They need a company that's based locally here in the U.S. that yep. they can call. Uh, not not you're you're gonna not walk them through everything step by step. That's what you would, but yep. but this is so simply that's not needed. But just having something like. Uh, I, I, one of the guys that was from our area had asked, you said, Hey, how can our uh, county water system, you know, do pressure sensors and your eyes light up, his eyes light up. So having that is such an asset. So I encourage you guys check out spec five. They've been a great company to partner with, uh, forefront, definitely get with them. Uh, Daniel's a great guy to work with easy going, and, uh, they really want to help the community out. So check them out, spec5.com. We'll put a link down below. Daniel, thanks for coming up, man. I appreciate it. It's uh, great to meet you. See if we can't get you some bluegrass music later today or something. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks for coming up.